And welcome to the Mike and Brad Show. I am Mike and... Oh, man, that means I'm Brad, everybody. <laughs> Enter stage left. Yes. <laughs> You're almost like a stuntman. Oh, they put sugar in it. This is your fault. You shouldn't be having sugar because Mike recently uh, ate himself to death and was in the hospital. <laughs> and when you ordered your... I said, Mike, what kind of coffee? He said, I want... Cream and one sugar. And I almost said, don't have sugar. It's bad for you. They put cream and sugar in mine. They confused it too. I bet, I bet yours has no sugar in it. it. It has one. Like I wanted. Just one sugar. Right. You know, well, Mike bad. is trying to poison me. I'm a picture yeah. of health, which is so yeah. very, very untrue. Well, Hollywood's going down. So that we're only we're next in line of success of things. The Mike and Brad show we'll has to be brought ship. down. The seedy nature of the Mike and Brad show. <laughs> There's so many, yeah, there's so many messed up things in the news, right? So we look for like light subjects to talk about that are current, not that this is light. Boy, this, you're going to be like, how is that light, Brad? I asked my brother Jeff today, I said, do you have any subjects you would like Mike and I discuss for the Mike and Brad show? He goes, well, Bob Baca died recently. And I'm like, I, I, first of all. Recently? I thought he'd been dead for 20 years. So first of all, recent, uh, first of all, how I don't know how somebody dying is light news. That's the kind of asshole I am. <laughs> Second of all, morbid. before right when I was waiting for you to come in to start, I was like, let me just fact check Jeff Pierce on the recently, 2023. <laughs> he all because he wanted me. Jeff to Pierce see, is Encino man. All <laughs> he just melted and came back. He wanted me to say that Bob Baca died at age 99, so he went as close to a dollar without going over. <laughs> that was the whole reason. The price is wrong, to, bitch. But it's not recent. Speaking, though, of The Price is Right, I don't know. I know you're much older than me and everybody else, but my, always my memory of Price is Right is staying home from school sick, you watch Price is Right. That's my only memory. It's the only time I've seen that show. I know it was like a big deal when like Drew, Drew Carey took over and everything, but to me it didn't affect me at all because I was no longer in school. So if I wasn't homesick from school, I would never or, watch or it. Oh, 75 years old. <laughs> like, do, have you watched the show? I watched it, yeah. All right, so here's my... I, I didn't go out of my way. I mean, when we were growing up, you know, there was only a few channels, Brad. So and it's a long running show and it was always, it was on and people spinning that wheel. The coolest thing, Bob Baca was the shit, man. He, he was the like a pioneer. He had that long the microphone with the, like. with the little dot on the top. Yeah. <laughs> he, my mem one of my memories of that show, and there, this is the reason I wanted to talk about it, is they'd always have the commercial during that show for the Craftmatic adjustable bed. Oh. With an old couple who old, like the oldest people in the whole world. Like I'd see and be like, man, those people are a thousand. So I guess when you're almost dead, you get one of those beds. The reason I bring that up. It's a rite of, pa is, a rite of passage. I don't think of myself as really old, but apparently I am because I really want one of those beds because I have. I thought you just purchased one. No, no. I've been talking about it. Did you get a new it. bed? No. I've been talking. Somebody I know. You talk a lot of people up about yeah, their beds. Well, and when you get my age, that's it. That's a topic. Cause it's like, hey, <laughs> we went out to dinner last night. What bed do you have, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what bed are you rocking these days? Yeah, what kind of bed are you rocking? Almost like, you know, the, your new balance white sneakers. Yeah, you, you, know? you got the new Air Jordans? Yeah, I got the new Craftmatic adjustable <laughs> bed. I actually want one too. But, and, um, because why do you want one? I'll tell you why I want one. I hate um, to watch TV in bed mainly. Oh, okay. Because um, I fall asleep a lot in the recliner and it has that kind of recliner. So if I fall asleep, I, I can't watch TV just laying on the bed watching it. My wife could do that like forever. Mike I can't wants do it. it for entertainment. So we have actually two TVs in my bedroom. One in front of, we have like a recliner and a chase lounge and like a sex, you know, like a part of the bedroom. It's like my bedroom's like 13. 13 by 28 so it's a big room mm -hmm. and she has her own tv that she can watch while she's in bed and i watch that's actually very TV. practical yeah. uh, normally i'd make fun of you but uh we my <laughs> wife and i sometimes do disagree on what to watch yeah but mike's purpose for wanting the craftmatic adjustable it's bed twice. aside from being old is for entertainment purposes i because much like the old people i want to 
for health reasons, Mike, because I have How? GERD. Are you familiar with GERD? No. GERD is gastro... Is it, is it sexually transmitted? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put that past you. you I got to talk to my wife about the GERD. I got to talk to my wife about the GERD. I think she, I think yeah. she gave me GERD. She's not practicing safe sex <laughs> out there, out there on the Diddy Trail. I, uh, <laughs> GERD to me sounds like fat guy disease, but I don't feel like I'm very fat. It's, it's gastroesophageal reflux disease. It sounds like a wimpy, wimpy, it's a fat like guy a disease. sex only wimpy people. It's, it's like, I feel like GERD's the sound a fat guy makes when he gets up in the morning. He's like, GERD. Like I, <laughs> I have. How long have you suffered from this good? A while. I take prescription meds for my acid reflux, which is no good. So I make fun of your health all the time. I yeah, am but not You're the one that's guy. on meds. I'm not on meds. You know yeah. what I'm on? I'm on coffee with one sugar. With sugar. The sugar is poison, by the way. Mm. I, so, so with GERD, it's for some best reason, taste in poison. <laughs> with acid reflux, they say it's better to sleep up like not flat. Yeah. I don't know why. I guess the, the acid, if it... If you're at an angle, the acid oh, goes down to your feet where it doesn't hurt you anymore. Yeah. It's a it's, gravity thing. Yeah, <laughs> you need to, <laughs> you to fight acid reflux with gravity. So my parents, I can't remember if I told you this, so my, it runs in my family. Everybody has acid. Everybody have, has good. We all have weak stomachs and GERD, all of us, right? Let that be a lesson to our viewers out there. <laughs> If you ever get a chance to hook up with a piss, don't do it <laughs> unless you want good and have the money for a craftmatic bed. <laughs> so speaking of the money, speaking of the money for the craftmatic adjustable bed, my parents who also have GERD, my dad who has money, too cheap to buy one. So growing up, they would put phone books under the end of their bed so my parents would sleep like what was the name of, what was the name like of that? at an angle like <laughs> like like this. Like, like like a bat like a original Batman episode, <laughs> and they were the bad guys going up the up the building, right? Like this. My uncle too. <laughs> my uncle also who could afford the bed. Also, it? they would put stuff under their bed so that their bed was like this because they're too cheap. I uh, have not put phone books, but I do need one because my acid reflux is killing me, Mike. And I want to be able to have my coffee and have my beer without, uh, and I, I, I just have a tendency, like I eat healthy all day and then at night I'll eat, eat and then I go to bed. It's the I, worst thing you can I, do. I happen, happen to be very aware that your parents are millionaires. <laughs> They're not millionaires. And they won't spend any money. They have I, more money than so, I do. Though, right? That's for sure. So now that they're older, and the kids are gone, you know, and they're not paying for your schooling, obviously. And have they invested in the actual bed? Or are they still they doing that? They don't their... have the bed. Uh, I think what their plan is, is to be buried with their money like King Tut. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the plan. I don't think I'm going to see that money. <laughs> um, wow. That's yeah. crazy. So man. none of us have that. I don't. You know we're having a, a wonderful podcast or internet show when we're spending 20 minutes talking about gastroesophageal reflux disease and my cheap parents. We're off to a good start on the show. You no, know, it's like, it's funny when you talk about your parents' bedrooms and stuff. Remember growing up, like you would go over your aunt's house or your grandparents' house and you would like, you know, you know be at a get together whether it's Thanksgiving or just a party and you walk past, go to the bathroom and you walk past the bedroom Mm -hmm. And you see separate beds. Oh, that's and how you go, know things. That's are. messed up. That's how you know, you know things are Now, going. now, mm. that's a great idea. Don't even say that because that's a great idea. Because I, I'll go step that. further. I want my own room. That see that <laughs> it, I think that's too sad. One common used to say that before we upgraded that bed because I am very long. Well, she suggested separate beds. So I am very long. If she sleeps like a rock, when she lays down, she's just uh, doesn't move all night, just unconscious, and she's like this thing. I'm kind of guessing she I sleeps in a around. soccer. She sleeps in a soccer uniform too. I bet. <laughs> I move around. <laughs> I'm like this, like, and I roll around all night. I can't and it imagine. Drives, I, I would put you in. A, I would put you in another bed too. <laughs> it drives her crazy. <laughs> but we upgraded the bed, but not enough. We need the Craftmatic. For my GERD problem. All right, we can't spend the whole episode talking about yeah. beds. So, look, we missed last week. I was sick. Thanks for your thoughts and prayers. Um, Not good related. It no. wasn't. 
was not good really. It was, it was not a flare up from good. <laughs> and I didn't have my gallbladder removed. I just had a cold. So it's been two weeks. Do you have to wear condoms now because you're good? <laughs> so the, I don't want a condom to get the good. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's been two weeks. Brad is, um, I, I'm going to try to say the word without messing up. When it was, I mess up words. So since um, good, Brad has the STD good, um, he's, he's now forced to practice abstinence. Abstinence? Is that what I you said? Right? said? No. Abstinence. Yeah. Abstinence. Well, it looks like yeah. we're going to have to make a shirt. Right. <laughs> say, it, say it how you said it again. Abstinence. <laughs> Which brings me to another topic we're here to discuss today. Mike, for those of you who don't know, is deaf and wears uh, cochlear implants. Now, I know that you're probably sick of me saying every episode Mike is deaf, but the reason but I do that... But sometimes people, we get new fans. Yes. And they're like, hey, and, and um, yeah. Which leads me to another topic. Uh, recently, uh, believe, I don't know if you can believe this uh, to our normal viewers like John Allen, but recently... Hello, Mike, John, by the way, and... And Neil's been a lot hey, of, Neil. he's been a big proponent of the show. Thank you, John and Neil. He also said, keep that, hold that thought. Um, um, Neil passed along info. He said, um, guys, um, you owe me a shirt, but I don't oh. want it. He said, don't spend the money, spend it on the show. So whatever budget you need for like the show. I would like to buy a coffee right now. I think so I like, thank you, thank Neil. You, Neil. Neil he, honestly, it makes him a sponsor now. Neil, <laughs> So I had another question about the shirt thing because our friend Vin that makes the shirt said, hey, you never ordered those shirts, but the people who won the shirts, including never contacted Neil, us. you never sent me a size. That's on you, anything. not us, not the good boy. Neil, if you want your shirt, just send me what size and where to send it and we'll get you the shirt, buddy. Same thing with uh, Tyler uh, from that, uh, the Bulletos Advanced Training. If you want your shirt, send us the size and where to send the shirt, we'll get Very your shirt. Very simple. But back to the point of Mike being deaf. Uh, YouTube is a cesspool for the meanest <laughs> people in the world. So not everyone's as kind as Neil and John and Tyler. They, there's some horrific people out there in the world. In one of our recent clips from the Mike and Brad show, which all our clips are amazing, uh, a guy left a comment saying, what the hell is on the side of that guy's head? He said, it looks like he has Snapple caps taped to his head. <laughs> Snapple so, caps. <laughs> I've heard some things, but Snapple Caps is like, that's new. I was wondering from his perspective, what would the strategy be there? Like, like it's a style thing? Like, I, you know, it would be cool if like, I put a yeah, piece. Who goes out of their way? <laughs> like, you know what? Today I'm putting Snapple Caps on my head. <laughs> I'm going to start a trend. And uh, I'm going to leave them there until somebody notices. <laughs> <laughs> it's Snapple. Isn't that like, they're the caps that have sayings on them. Yes, yes, yes. It would say like, I remember where, I, that's where I learned it says, what is the only animal that can get sunburned? It's a pig. I, I read that on a snap. How cap. tall you have to be to get good? <laughs> Seven feet. <laughs> Craftmatic beds, yay or nay. <laughs> So we, what would my Snapple cap yeah, say? Yeah, what would Mike Murray's Snapple uh, we cap? We should make that, that a t-shirt contest. Put that in the comments. The best, best Snapple cap Mike Murray wearing um, gets a t-shirt. Um, hopefully Neil wins and gives it back to us so we have a better budget here and get, a, get another coffee. But we'll probably have to come in with another coffee because they <laughs> from Bessie. And <laughs> this is Mike's fault because oh, he got his with the sugar. It's my fault. They heard sugar and that was it. But... Uh, so the contest again is if if Mike is in fact faking being deaf and, and he's in fact Snapple caps. Right. What do you think? Say, what, is, what does it say on the inside of those Snapple caps? That I is would, the contest. I ever tell you the time I was doing a show. I was like in Georgia or something like that, and everybody's super nice down there. You go into a, like an eczema mm. or whatever. Southern hospitality. It's it's amazing. Yes. It's amazing. So. And they love our voices, by the way. <laughs> like, accent, we're sexy yeah. as hell. Now. Like, I'm a stud in Georgia. Yeah. Like, North Carolina, oh, yeah. women want me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, over here, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Kathy Murray, years ago, she stuck with me now. So, one drunken night. I, yeah. I'm in line. I'm, I walk up to the counter, and was a, a nice woman. She was like, What's that on your head? <laughs> you like? Do you is like Snapple? Is that a cell? Is that a cell phone? And I'm like, oh, I said, no. I said it's a cochlear, 
implant. I got him. Cochlear implants? <laughs> cochlear implants. What the right? hell is a cochlear implant? That's I a said, totally <laughs> different kind of implant. I said, by the way. And I'm, I uh, do a bad impersonation. Cochlear implants? What the hell is a cochlear implant? I said, well, it's like there's an electrode inside my cochlea, there's magnets in my Oh, hell no! <laughs> Ain't nobody putting cochlear, help, cochlear implants in me! <laughs> so this dying. woman's perspective, this southern Georgian woman's perspective, was she'd rather be deaf than wear Snapple caps on the side of her head. That's her. She's like, she's like, screw it, I'll just be deaf. That's fine. My attention is so torn, this whole discussion, because I keep thinking, should I run out there and have him fix my coffee? I told you. And leave Mike Murray in here See, by himself. <laughs> Saying God knows what, because we don't edit this show. It just goes. So, so do we risk it and leave Mike in here talking by himself and I go well, get a see, coffee? What a, do you think? It's a beautiful part about Brood Awakens. Thank you, Brood, and they're amazing Shout here. Out to um, is if you if Dave watches this episode and sees that you didn't go up there and he'll swap it out, him. he'd be mad. They, so right. that's how the owner is here. I'll keep them entertained for a couple of minutes. All right. I, I don't trust you in here. I'm gonna go tell him real quick. I need this replaced. Yeah, no problem. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm just like you know, entertain him, Mike. Yeah. Holy shit! I thought he'd never leave. <laughs> How about that bullshit disease he's talking about? Good. Who the just, hell we're good recording good? in there, so I'm not trying to really? run. Really? Uh, Do you I use that excuses at school? Uh, like, no, sorry, why would you out you fighting, Mr. Pierce? Oh, I had a slip up from good, and then he's gonna explain. His cheap disease to the teacher. He, he had to get picked up. I forgot my mic's on. Huh? My mic is on. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> so. So. You're you were ordering. Did you order? Yeah. You can, you're going to hand me. All, this is going to be the weirdest episode. So yeah. you're talking about God knows what. We're probably talking over each other. That is going to be a mess. On. It's going to be an awesome editing job. That is. I really didn't insane. say anything. I all just. Right, thought, so welcome I basically back. was like saying, hey, mate. If you haven't had a chance to check Brad's set out, get out to see a show. He's got a sold out show Thursday. I was oh, telling him all you about very that. Much, Mike and um and so that's pretty cool. So um, and if you would like to see Mike and Brad actually do stand up comedy, I think we're way better comedians as uh, than podcasts. Oh, I don't know. Coach. This show's pretty good if you just witnessed the <laughs> hey, last five. Hey, minutes. Come on. Oh, I can tell wait from here. Yeah. It's perfect. Thank, thank you. you so Say much. Say hello thank to the you. camera. Say hi. Hi, thank, thank you. you. What's your name? <laughs> I'm Jessica. This is Kevin Jessica? Sullivan's daughter. Yes, Jessica oh. Sullivan. Oh, Kevin Sullivan's daughter. He's amazing. Oh, Kevin <laughs> Sullivan's daughter. Did you know he has good? Just, just, <laughs> do you know what Gerd is? Do yourself a favor. I actually don't. Stay away. She looks so if you ever, Hey, if you ever have a chance to date Brad, wear those gloves. <laughs> just saying, stay away from him. Brad when my, wife and, when my wife inevitably leaves me because of my yeah. Gerd. So hopefully Kevin, we'll, we'll tell Kevin to watch the episode and see your cameo. And um, so you Jane, notice she's wearing gloves, and so she doesn't catch the gird. <laughs> what do you think I just said? Oh, you just. Said what are you deaf? I am deaf. Hey, you want Give this? Give me those. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable. Thank you for the coffee. Well, thank you. Yeah, no, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. I didn't realize you said that. I was distracted. All right. <laughs> Wow, this is the most. Uh, look, we run a very unprofessional show, but this has to be the least professional episode. This is so the worst fun. one ever. I don't think we've gotten anything done. No. But we did learn about good. I don't think anybody out there knows about good. Glad I could help. No, honestly, a lot of uh, fat people have it. Uh, so some people have gallbladder issues, some people have GERD. And. Uh, in my family, we're a very weak family, although we live very long. Explain that. Anyways, um, my grandmother lived to 101. <laughs> so did, so did Bob Baca. Nobody did you, cares. <laughs> did you meet my grandma? I can't remember. I if you never met, met her, but I, I saw videos of her. Mm. You used to make um, like YouTube clips and send them yeah, out. She was to, very. She funny. made it to Conan O'Brien, I would think, once, right? Yes. Did you know that she was like the most negative? person in my family you have told me but she's so but funny. she was like the king negative yes and, and then everybody got sprinkles of it yes but she was also wicked funny she was wicked funny with it not purposely funny yeah. just funny just like that negative typical new england sarcastic dry mm -hmm. humor 
Um, but a funny thing my cousin once said, because she lived to 101, and you know, like when the smuckest people, the local paper, they interview someone when they turn 100, and they always say, how did you make it? So and they always say, oh. I kept a positive attitude, <laughs> I was <laughs> thankful every day. So we used to say in my family, like, this makes no sense, because they always say staying positive. And my cousin said, hey, if she was positive and optimistic, she would have lived to 200. She, she, she would have been like Moses. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> She was like, she, how, old, how old are you? 752. <laughs> I'm just feeling good, <laughs> baby. You know, old people too, once they reach a certain age, they feel compelled to tell you how old they are as soon as you meet them. Oh, Complete yeah. strangers. Mm. I met a guy the other day, and I'm like, you know, he's being introduced to him. Oh, this is so and so. Um, I was at the park or whatever. And I'm like, hey, nice to meet you. And he shook my hand, and he, they always shake it hard, too, these mm. people, right? They shake it hard like it's like they're hanging on. <laughs> they're like, oh, hey, help they shake, they go, like, shake my hand. Help me. And they go like this, I'm 86 years old. <laughs> That's the first words. <laughs> I'm 92. <laughs> my dad. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? My dad definitely does that. A hundred percent he does it's that. Nuts. Shake my dad's hand It's like, I think, I think the age is 80, anything over 82. Mm. People have to address how old they are. I don't know. Like, what are they expecting? A coupon? I don't know. What you <laughs> a doing? round of applause. <laughs> it's, it's really they give one pound of pressure per year per they've year. been alive. Dude, so it's, it's like, like 95 like, pounds of pressure. <laughs> like, I'm 87. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so on the topic of old and getting old, which uh, Mike and I are obviously pretty old. I have GERD. He had surgery recently. You, you're almost at retirement age. So does that mean you're going to retire from the Mike and Brad show? Or? <laughs> We're going to have a big party. Yeah, what are you going to do for your retirement? What is your plan? I don't think I'm going to make it to it. <laughs> now, um, I, I talk, we talk about this a lot. And, and, and um, I'm one of those guys. I, I, I'll never stop doing any, you know, always be doing something, whether it's comedy or, um, you know what I mean? Here's or a fun fact for you watching. Or, or, or selling Here's hot dogs. <laughs> if you don't have a job, can you retire? <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't, I can't even wrap my head around the idea of retiring. Because what am I retiring from? Exactly. I would just... And, but that's the beautiful part of what we do. Yeah. Is, is that we... Um, even though some people look at what we do as not a job. Mm -hmm. well, for example, um, you think this is easy? It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it's that we do something that we love so much; mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like a job. And then, like, I'm Unless sure, it's I'm a sure you've had discussion. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and those are bad days at the job. Bad so, day like, like today, my job took me a two-hour drive one way and a two-hour drive back. So it was five hours plus I had to get up, get ready. So you're talking, it's eight hours right there for just one talk that I did. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm sure you had this discussion with your wife. I had it with my wife years ago and you know, she understands now. She, she would say like, all right, oh, you're going out, you're doing a show tonight. Yeah, you're gonna be having fun while I'm over here. It, 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 the only fun as a comedian is that time that you are on stage. And guess what? You gotta deliver. You yeah, it's, try it's a to lot of go out there in yeah. front of complete strangers that paid money. Yeah, you Especially gotta make them laugh. Especially the show. You gotta make them laugh. Which brings me to my next YouTube insult comment. Uh, <laughs> so I posted a video this morning of, uh, from a show the other day. Mm -hmm. And during the video and during the show, this old guy got up and left. I saw the video, I literally saw it this morning. Okay, so before we're getting ready for this, and I was actually thinking about the Snapple comment, and right away I'm like, well, I just posted this and it already has 5,000 views, that's a lot for me. I'm not a big, you know, viral sensation. So 5,000 in, in half a day is a lot. That's a good and stop. The one comment popped up, I'm like, oh no, I better not look. <laughs> Because there even Joe Rogan says he doesn't look at his it's YouTube. It's coming comments. from the Snapple family. Family. The guy said I would have left too. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is awesome. That is awesome. We have comics that we know, and we we legit like you know out of professionalism stay there and suffer. 
but there's lots of guys out there that we would leave. Oh, definitely. Um, but especially like Bill Simons, um, who comes or goes on, you want to get out of there. <laughs> uh, Poor Bill. Fire after here, side knot one more time. <laughs> I didn't look at the guy's handle, but it would be really funny if I looked at it and it was the same guy from the Snapple comment. I think, I think we guy. should do a deep dive on this guy. And <laughs> if we're in luck, he has a YouTube channel. We should stop. Can you find out if they have? Yes, I can. I can find How? that out. Just, you click on, the, on their his profile. Thing. Yeah. Most of these insulting YouTube comments, don't, they don't have much of a life. They just like to say mean things. Uh, it's it's like a known phenomenon. What's I, it? That's I see a joke. It feel, especially on YouTube, I don't experience as much on Instagram or anything else. But YouTube, they are the meanest people. But you know, what we'll start doing is we'll start reading some of our YouTube comments on on the Mike and Brad show. Didn't That'll be fun. Did we do that before with something? Yes, I had a video that got like two hundred something thousand what views was it on about? YouTube. Remember the there was a girl uh, uh, in uh, our friend Tyler's favorite club, Gotham. This girl screamed at me from the audience, and the video got like 200 something thousand views like really fast. So it was like a big video, but when that happens to you, you get a lot of comments. And as I'm saying, Not the comments all of them are, are positive. Mean. Most of them are mean. Oh, so, that was the social justice one. Yes. Yeah, you so should much. check it out, people. That was a little backstory to that. Now it's coming back to me. Yeah. That was the one where Brad went to Gotham, and it was a new talent showcase. Where, and he, he was about to go up, and then Jim Gaffigan, I mean, Jerry Seinfeld came in, and then Jim Gaffigan No, came you're mixing in. up two yeah. shows. Let me tell you the story. No, 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 no. It's leading right, up to All right, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. I thought your dementia Sit down was good, boy. I thought your dementia was kicking in. <laughs> you're messing everything up okay. tonight. I know, I'm a so, mess. So Brad had this monster set, because he had to follow Jim Gaffigan and Jerry Seinfeld at the world-famous Gotham Comedy Show. True story. He was texting me while he was backstage. He was like, what the hell? Seinfeld's going up. He goes up and kills it for a half hour. Gaffigan just walked in. He goes in and destroys it. What am I going to do? I said, make fun of them. Make fun of the fact that you had to follow him. So make a long story short. He has a great set. Doesn't do one joke. He just railed on the club and Gaffigan and Seinfeld. He roasted them and it went viral and they invited him back. So when he's returned back, Brad is shitting on the club like you want to believe thinking <laughs> thinking lightning's gonna strike twice and it wasn't <laughs> but there was a social that? justice uh a table full of lesbian social justice warriors no, 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 who no. started heckling no you. no i want to make sure i'm fair to the lesbian community <laughs> there were actually a lesbian couple in the back who later said i can't believe that girl yelled at you that was ridiculous oh, so you had the girl who yelled at me was not a lesbian Oh, she was offended on behalf of those all are the lesbians. worst. Yeah, I'm telling you, a married the lesbian worst. couple talked to me yeah. after the show. The nicest people, they were not. That's offended. the whole world nowadays. Yes. It's other people being offended for other people. Yes, speak for yourself. We're Seriously. not offended. All I was doing was some kind of crowd work. I was talking to women up front, and I was making a joke. How hopefully you guys are lesbians because if you're straight. My fat old friends over here are going to try to hit on you. That was where my brain was going. Yeah. But as soon as I asked if they were lesbians, I didn't say anything derogatory about lesbians, nothing. I just asked if they were lesbians. This girl in the back screamed at me, all pissed yeah. off. It was a whole thing. So, but yeah. she was just on and behalf of them. What did offended. you just prove? You just proved that our job can be horrible sometimes. Yeah. And that, that, that took a whole day and whole night to do that. Yeah, it drove all the way to yeah. New York for a six minutes set. Yeah, to bring people. I'm a minute in, I'm thinking, oh man, here we are. Now this is the whole thing, is this yeah. girl and, yelling at and me. And this is another episode of Mike and Brad will tell you the fallout from that show got even worse. And make a long story short, Brad got banned from the club. But that's another day. We, you know, we might as well just finish the story now because we're in it. It's a great we'll right, finish finish the story. So, so as Mike said, that time that I had to follow Seinfeld and Gaff again, it went good. The manager of the club thought it was funny. Everything. Now, this second time where the girl yelled at me, what we left out of the story is in my head, uh, I heard Jim Gaffigan was coming again, and my head instantly was like, oh, last time they loved it when I made jokes about following Jim Gaffigan. So when word starts spreading amongst the comedians in the back, hey, Gaffigan's coming in, Gaffigan's coming in, 
I said to the manager, hey, last time I followed Gaffigan and it was funny and nobody typically wants to follow Jim Gaffigan, so can I follow him again? And how they do it, it's like drawing your name out of a hat. It's just random how they do the order of the night. And I had drawn like one or something. He's like, nah, just leave it as it is. So if I was professional, I'd be like, okay, I'll just do my set. But I couldn't let it go. That's the only thing you're gonna take away from the show tape. <laughs> If I was a professional. That's a t-shirt. That's the name of this episode. If I was a professional, dot, 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 and on the back, Reckle. <laughs> R-C-L-E. So, but I couldn't let it go. So I was like, man, I'm going to make, I have to make a joke about it. So during the beginning of my set, I said, oh, I just heard Jim Gaffigan's coming in tonight. And every time I come here, Jim Gaffigan comes and takes my thunder ruining and taking all the attention off me. I'm like, this guy opened for the Pope. Isn't that enough for him? Can I just have five minutes? Anyways. Cardinal sin. I get off the stage <laughs> after the girl yelled at me and all that, and the manager comes screaming at me. Now, I think he's screaming at me because he's taking the girl's side. No, no, unrelated. He's like, you're not supposed to tell the audience that Jim Gaffigan's coming here. This guy sells out arenas. This is not public knowledge. Bye, bye, bye. And he's like, you understand what you just did? And I got screamed at. Here's the thing. And, and see that manager? And the fact of the matter is, Gaffigan pops in there every day. Yeah, so does Seinfeld. Every day. Him yeah. and Seinfeld, that's their home club. That's, where, that's their open mic. They get to go in and bump whoever's in the line yeah. and go walk there and work on new stuff. Which them working on their new stuff is like still a hundred times better than our power stuff. We should we should pop in there tonight. Like, yeah, I'm just working on my new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, Dude! <laughs> You're not oh. even joking. That's a great line for a regular show, no? <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. Like, say, I, you know, when nobody laughs, like, eh, I'm just working on new stuff, guys. <laughs> I... One little detail we left out, and then we'll move on, is I also made fun of the scaff scaffolding out in front of the building, uh, which he did not. It's been under construction didn't. forever. For a hundred years, mm. it's been under construction. You went lying. So I made a joke about that, and it turns out the owner did not find that funny. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> if I was a professional. The audience didn't find them funny, and the owner didn't find them funny. And it was... We're probably oh, gonna, man. Uh, I know. I wanted to. We had other topics. What, uh, what's, what's fast? You know, let's just go through them. Right, speed re topics. Re real quick. New, uh, sub new, se um, new segment. segment. Speed topics. All right. Speed topics real quick. Have you heard of dirty soda? Who? <laughs> <laughs> take that as a Next point. topic. <laughs> <laughs> and that's our show. Look, 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 good. Do it again. Ready? Have you heard of dirty soda? No. All right. How about Halloween? No, I... <laughs> Dirty soda. Dirty soda. Dirty soda is a phenomenon apparently made popular by the Mormons. I guess there's some Mormon uh, wives reality show, and on this Mormon show they drink dirty soda. Hmm. And dirty soda, and don't get any ideas. Uh, you're supposed to be getting healthy. They take regular soda like a Coke, but they add cream in extra syrup to it to make it even sweeter. You ever hear of Laverne and Shirley? Of course. That was their, their, their drink, soda and milk. What really? They had a I name. What was that. the name of it? They had a name for it. They used to drink it all the time. But Laverne and Shirley, so we'll have an answer for you next week, but yeah. um, Laverne used to drink um, Is milk and soda. Is it possible Laverne and Shirley were Mormons? It's possible. Where did that show take place? They're in the factory at the beginning. Where Milwaukee. Is it not, uh, it's, it's not Utah. Uh, okay, Dirty Soda. And last topic, we got to get the hell out of here. Oh, there's two other topics. We never quick, talked quick, about, quick. We never talked about the, the bulls, the rodeo bulls running around Emerald Square Mall. That was crazy. That was nuts. And one of the things in the news I love that came up from the live feed, it said, if you see the bulls, do not approach them. <laughs> you don't say. How can, how can you contain yourself? I see a bull, I'm walking towards First it. Thing, like, can I pet the bull? Can I pet? I'm the same thing with grizzly bears. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, a tiger. <laughs> oh, look, at, look at the sleeping lion, it's so cute. <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, you know somebody would get a selfie with the bulls and get freaking trampled. I got on a mechanical bull once. I thought I was going to die. <laughs> Surprise really, you with Me and Bill stuff. Simons actually milked the cow in the, at the um, Kansas City, Kansas State Fair. We were doing a funny for funds down there. We went to the State Fair, Kansas. You can't get bigger than that. that those State Fairs, that's everything. That's their Disney. And um, we actually milked the cow. Is there a video of that? Yeah, we somewhere? have a video of it. All right, listen. Where can that be found? <laughs> huh? I could try to find it. Bill might have it. Um, can you imagine the mean comments on that video? Mike and Bill milking and a And then cow. we both got temporary tattoos on our tramp stamp that said funny for fun. <laughs> I'm not even joking. There's a picture of that somewhere out there. Um, what's the next topic? Let's go. All right, we got to go. No, we got to go. We, this, we've gone way over. Look. Next week we'll talk more. I was add some stuff about Halloween, but next week we'll talk about that. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a really strange show. Thank you. We'll see you show. next week. And watch out for that good. This has been the If I Was Professional episode of Mike and Brad. Yo.